Hey guys, how's it going? This is video four of our four part series and today we're gonna go over some secret pro tips as well as post-production on how to make your footage look its best. In video one, we discussed all the gear and all the equipment necessary to get started in aerial photography. In video two, we discussed safety precautions, pre-flight checklists, and everything that you need to know before you take off the ground. And in video three, we discussed principles behind getting a cinematic shot, as well as stick configurations on exactly how to get them. We're back here at HQ today, and I'm gonna go over some drone hacks. These are tips and things that I have acquired through the past year and a half of drone filmmaking, and I have a good feeling you guys are gonna get a ton of value out of it. First tip is your controller stance, or like the way that you're holding the controller. So when you take it out of the box, instantly, intuitively, you're gonna assume that you put your thumbs on the top to control the copter, which is how most people fly. What I found a couple months in was that I wanted a more precise way to control the stick. So I found that back in the video game days, we called this crab style. So grabbing, grabbing the joysticks with your index finger and your thumb allows a much more precise stick movement when you're flying and trying to get a cinematic shot. So remember, hold it like this, not like this. So I found even after I changed my controller stance, I found that I still wanted a way to have more precision with my stick movement. So I found that these little sticks here, okay, this is a super hack, you guys. You're gonna un unscrew this little piece right here on the top by holding the base. And once it's near the top here, you're gonna take it and then start screwing the bottom too. And then once it reaches the top, you tighten it. Do the same thing with the other side. So now you have taller joysticks. And what I have found is that it has, it's the distance from the top of the joystick is further away from the base. So your stick inputs are gonna be less jerky and you're gonna have a much smoother flying experience because there's so much more, there's a, a larger plane to move your sticks around. And you can adjust this from super high to medium to low, whatever you prefer. I found that right in the middle works best for me. Pro tip number three. So you're gonna go on your computer here and open up your Phantom Assistant software. Plug your copter into your computer and you're gonna go into advanced, in the advanced settings here. And you can see there's a battery option and a gimbal option. And you can see here there's three parameters that you can adjust for the gimbal. And what I really recommend is taking your tilt control gain and bringing it down to zero. The tilt control gain is the sensitivity of how much the gimbal will tilt when you turn the gimbal wheel. So when you have it on super high sensitivity, even the smallest movement will make the camera flip up really quick and then flip down. But with, when you have your tilt control gain at zero and your full throttle on the gimbal, it's still gonna pan super, super, super smooth. So when you're flying in the air and you're operating the copter, doing line of sight, the last thing you wanna think about is your gimbal speed. So when you have it set to zero, you're flying, you can just pop it down and it's moving at its slowest pace where you get that really smooth cinematic shot. Pro tip number four. You guys are really gonna dig this one. So when you get the controller stock out of the box, it's the, all the sticks were, are gonna naturally revert back to the center when you let go of them. But when you're flying solo, what I found is that when you're getting the up jib shots or down jib shots, it's really important to have a consistent speed in your movement. So I found that when the sticks come back to the center by themselves, it was really difficult to get a smooth shot while thinking of everything, while trying to focus on everything else at the same time too. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop out these screws in these four corners of the remote, and there will be a spring underneath this joystick here. And you can see when you move it up and down which spring it is. And there's tutorials online if you get lost. But you go inside, take the spring out that brings the center stick back to the center, and then you will have a stick that just stays in one spot when you let go of it. And what this does is when you're out flying and you say you want to get a specific speed for a jib shot, all you do is hit it up and you just let it go. And that's so helpful in trying to get cinematic shots because you don't have to worry about the up speed anymore. You can focus on your subject, you can focus on your gimbal tilt, you can focus on the movement left and right of the copter, but taking, taking this factor out gives you such more incredible shots because it allows you to put your brain power towards other things 
as opposed to focusing on what speed the copier is going up or down. Pro tip number five. So if you're just getting into the world of photography, composition, and you're still working on composing a decent image from the ground, this tip is gonna help you a lot. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your monitor, and what I found was really helpful in the beginning was that if you take, let's see, some scotch tape or some electrical tape and make your own rule of thirds on the screen here, it's gonna help you greatly when you're flying because again when you're flying when you're when you're flying your drone in the air there are a, a ton of things that you think about including other people around the shot that you're getting how much battery you have so what the composition lines do is it takes a weight off of things that you have to think about when you're trying to get a cool shot so when you have the guidelines here it's so simple you just look down you can see that your horizon is straight on the bottom right third and you just keep flying finally pro tip number six Always keep in mind how much footage you're shooting. Know that when you're shooting with a GoPro in the sky and you do like a 20 minute flight, there's gonna be a 20 minute clip on that camera and that's gonna, do, that's gonna take twice the amount of time to go through all the footage in post and editing will be a headache. So always be mindful about how much you're shooting and try to keep your workflow very streamlined and smooth. You don't wanna deal with too much footage and it makes the editing experience much less enjoyable than it could be. All right, so I hope you guys got some awesome value out of those tips. You guys just got a year and a half of condensed knowledge and some little hacks that are gonna change the game for you. So you have really beautiful looking footage. Let's take it into the computer and make it two, three, four, five times more beautiful. And I'm gonna go into post-production now and review a couple things that we do to make our shots look super dope. So the first step in post-production is having organized footage. Um, as a filmmaker and photographer, it's critically important to have all your stuff organized because that determines your workflow. And when you don't know where your things are, nothing gets done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys, when I was in Thailand a couple months ago, I would organize my footage like this. So you see I would have by date, and then I would have an aerial folder. And inside the aerial folder, I'll have the dates. And the dates, these are the dates that I flew the copter and sometimes we we'll even put the location in the folder name, but that's not absolutely necessary. So inside the folder, you have your clips, and now your footage is organized. So I'm gonna upload Premiere Pro really quick, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So I'm gonna open a new project, and I'm gonna save the project right here on my desktop, okay? I'm just gonna name it Phantom Footy, okay? And typically, whether you're shooting in 1080, 720, make sure you choose your right preset along with your frame rate here. So now we're here in Premiere, and if you've never used it before, you can see that this is your project monitor. They're all labeled on the top here. This is your sequence timeline. Right here is where you keep all your footage. There's like your bins as well as your effects. And up here is your source monitor as well as your effect controls and audio mixer stuff. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna double click here in the bin area, and then you're gonna bring in some footy. So you're gonna go into, let's see, I'm gonna go into Thailand. Let's go 2014, aerials. Let's do, let's see. Let's do something that needs um, color correction as well as image distortion so we can really illustrate what post-production does to the shot. So let me see. We can find a quick landscape shot here. All right, so I'm gonna take that clip as well as the shot from the ferry dock. Look at the horizon, is like wah. And then, Let's do one more at this ferry dock. It's looking sweet. Okay, so you're gonna just push enter to bring it in, and you can see that your clips are right here. Right here on the left. Okay, so it's really important that when, you're, when you have a lot of files in Premiere, it is equally as important to keep all your footage organized in Premiere, as well as in your folders on your desktop. So what I would do is I would select these and then bring it into this folder right here and then create a Thailand folder. You can see that already cleans up my bins. And right now I'm gonna go and grab a couple more shots just to illustrate my flow, my workflow here. Okay. And I'm just gonna call this Thailand 2 for illustrative purposes. All right, so when you're, when you're editing, the first thing I really like to do is 
you have to realize that you have really long clips because as long as the drone is in the air, you're filming. So first thing I'm going to do is cut and look through all the footage and find the actual shots that I got while in the air instead of having all the fluff and all the stuff that's going to cloud up my timeline. So what you'll do is you're going to open your folder, double click on one of the files, and what you're going to do is you're just going to scrub scrub through this this video and find all the shots that you want to put in your video. So right here I'm just going to take this simple jib shot right here and using I and O, these are marking your in and out points. You can also press these right here. And the green area is what you have selected. So I'm just going to take this really quick jib shot, push the O button and bring the video down here. Okay. All right, so now you got your footage in your timeline. Check it out. It's kind of um, distorted. It's kind of flat and the horizon is totally messed up. So I'm going to show you guys how to make it look really tight. So you're going to right click it and then you're going to go replace with After Effects composition. And what we're doing right now is that we're going to take it into After Effects and then do a little bit of optics compensation and it's going to take the fisheye effect and make the horizon line flat. So let's do that. This is the great thing about CS6. Everything is integrated and connected, so it's very easy to go back and forth on all your projects. And, okay. So now we're here. We got our footy. It's looking really weird. So I'm gonna go over here to the effects and presets here on the right. And I'm just gonna start top typing in optics. Here we go, optics compensation. So we're gonna take it, drag it over your footage, and voila, nothing yet. So you can look here at your effect controls on the top left here, and you see field of view. And what you're gonna do is click reverse lens distortion, and then you're gonna click, and then you're gonna drag this number value to the right. And as you can see that as I'm dragging it, it's flattening this image out. Check that out. And when you get around 50 or 60, it really heals that distorted fisheye look. So now you got a horizon, Let's see, you got a nice flat horizon. The image is still super crooked, so we're gonna fix that back in Premiere. But right now, I feel like the line looks a lot better and it looks less fisheye. So let's see, we're gonna go back into Premiere and then instantly it changes. Whoa, how cool is that? So you can see like a before and after by pressing Control Z, look at that. What a difference, what a difference. Okay, so now my horizon line is still crazy crooked, so I'm gonna go to Effect Controls here and you see on the motion on the top, you can change your rotation. And this takes a little bit of getting hang, hang of, but once you get a nice flat horizon, you have to readjust the image size. All right, now we have a pretty nicely framed shot. You see the horizon here on the top third, we got the sun, everything is nice and light, everything is very symmetrical and the image is very nice, com very nicely composed now. I'm gonna do a little bit of color correction to really make the footage shine. So we're gonna go into effects here. Let's go to, I usually like to use fast color corrector because it's really fast and it color corrects my footage. So I'm gonna drop it on top of here and you see in the effect controls, it shows up right underneath all the rotation and scaling that we did earlier. And I look at this image right now and I see that it's like a little bit low contrast and the colors are kind of flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my fast color corrector here and turn up the saturation. That's usually the first thing that I like to do. And you can crank it all the way to the top and then crank it all the way down. You can see what it does. See, too saturated, no saturation. So what I'm gonna do is try to somewhere in between. I really like 155, that looks pretty good. All right. And then now it's still lacking a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna add some brightness and contrast on here. Let's see, plus 10. Let's do a little bit less, plus seven. So right now I'm just gonna remove all the effects to show you the before and after. Okay. So here's our before shot. And then here's our after shot. You can see that it's, the lines are much smoother. There's more color, there's more contrast. It just looks more true than to the raw footy because the raw footy looks super weak compared to this. I'm gonna do another shot just for demonstrative purposes and then you guys can be on your own. We have tons of tutorials online on color correction and how to make Instagram shorts. So you can check out our YouTube there. But I'm just gonna lightly touch on another shot just so you guys can get a 
feel a little more confident on what I am doing to get cool shots. Okay, cool. So I have this uh, forward jib shot in Fisherman Village in Thailand. And right now I'm just going to grab it here. And you see it actually looks pretty decent already, but I'm just going to tweak it a little bit to show you what's possible with it. All right, so I'm going to grab this little jib shot. I'm going to bring it down into my timeline. Okay. And you see the shot, this was actually shot in slow motion. So the, fra the, the frame size is a little bit smaller. So you can either change your entire sequence project settings and change the dimensions, or if it's just a small clip, we like to scale to frame size and that usually solves your problem. It's gonna be a little bit, the, the resolution is gonna be lower because you're stretching the amount of pixels to fill in the space. So once you have a scale to the frame size, I'm gonna look here and see that it's a little bit blue, a little bit cold to be honest, and Koh Samui is a very tropical place. So what I'm gonna do first is throw a fast color correction on it. No, actually, 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 really quick. Let's bring it into After Effects again. Because if you see here on the top, the horizon line is a little bit bulbous. Not crazy extreme, but if it's flattened, it'll look way more cinematic. So what you're gonna do, take optics compensation, pop it on top, reverse lens distortion, check that box, and then just click and slide to the right. And you can see just that little bit, let's see, like 36 on the value scale. Yeah, 36, you got a solid horizon line. Looks so much better now. So I'm gonna go back into Premiere. So you can see the before and after here. Minor, but big difference. Okay, so let's throw on a fast color corrector here. And then, since it's a little bit blue, I'm gonna take this white balance wheel right here and then bring it more to the orange side. And you can see if you bring it to the extreme, it really does some crazy stuff to your footage. Whoa, disco party. All right, so I'm gonna just slightly bring it to the orange side here. And you see if I click before and after. You can't really tell that much. Let me do it again. Let me make it more extreme so you can see it. See now it's more orange. Gives a nice warmer feel. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit more so it looks better. All right, and looking at this image here, it's a little bit, I say the shadows are a little bit dark here on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do here is take my input gray level and just turn it up a little bit. So you see how that brings out the shadows? Let me make this bigger so you guys can see it. Just turn it up, you can see what it does. It makes it like lower contrast levels, but it definitely brings out the shadows. So I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit, maybe like 0.1 right here, you see? All right, so I lost a little bit of my highlights, so I'm gonna take the white level here and just bring it down, bring it back just a little bit. You can see what it does when I bring it to an extreme. Let's see, let's just turn it a little bit so it has a nice little shine on it. Okay, and I say it's lacking a little bit of color, so I'm gonna add a little saturation. You see what it does with max. And put it right in the middle here. And I say it's lacking a little bit more contrast, so I add a little brightness and contrast. And usually what I do for GoPro aerial shots filmed in ProTune, I always just a little fast color corrector, add a little saturation, add a little contrast with the brightness and contrast. Typically that's all you need to make the footage look cinematic. Unfortunately, these shots are not full of data, so you, the, more, the more effects you add to it, the more you tweak the colors and the way it looks, it's gonna degrade the footage and you're gonna start to see some artifacts and some really intense grain. The less you tweak the footage, the better it's gonna look, because it's just gonna be minor things that have a big impact. But if you, if you, again, if you turn it too much, it's just gonna destroy the footage. It's not gonna look good anymore. Okay, you can see here, before and after. You see it's like flat and dark and gloomy, but now it's a lot warmer and it's, the water is blue and it's tropical. So that's pretty sweet, if you ask me. All right, so now, okay, just pretend Pretend here that we have a, say an, Insta an Instagram video or a short video for YouTube. You got your footage right here on the top. You got a song down here on the bottom. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna quickly go over on export settings to show you guys how to get on the internet. So what you have here on the top is your render bar. And when you put it over your footage, when you export it, that's exactly what's gonna export out of Premiere. So what you're gonna do, set your render parameters, go to file, go to export, and press media. You can also get there by pressing Command M on a Mac. 
And then the first thing you're gonna do, what we usually like to do, we upload a lot of our stuff to YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So we like to put everything in H.264. And we're shooting at a frame rate of 24 FPS. So I'm gonna choose YouTube 1080, 23.976. I'm gonna name it Phantom Cinematics. Put on my desktop. And you can see here, here's your dimensions. If you're exporting 1080, 720, Whatever you, whatever you want it to be. If you're exporting an Instagram, let me tell you a quick tip here. You export in 640 by 640. And you can see here on the left that it's a much, it's a, it's, it's a crop, it's a crop video now, which makes it fit perfectly in Instagram without stretching the video. All right, and what you're gonna do after that is click this export button and you're off to the press. You got an internet connection, upload it and share it and ask your friends what they think about your dope shots. All right, so now you have here your super dope aerial cinema diploma. And with this certificate here, you can go out anywhere on planet Earth, take up your drone, and get some cool cinematic shots with the knowledge that we taught you today. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this series. We went over everything from what gear to get, how to get it, how to use it safely, how to put it in the air, how to get the shots, and how to make the shots even more beautiful on the computer. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two, and I hope you guys can take the knowledge that you learned in this video to take it on the field and share it with others and implement it into your work so you can instantly start producing results. So if you guys enjoyed this series, we have a ton of free tutorial videos sharing our knowledge about DSLR photography and filmmaking with the world. Go check it out on our channel there. Also, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. We really appreciate your feedback. So let us know what you guys thought. We'd love to make more of these so we can more effectively share our knowledge with you guys and you guys can effectively take that information and implement it into what you're doing. So since the making of this video, a ton of new technology and drones have rolled out to the marketplace. Some of them including setups that are completely ready to fly. Not like everything included from FPV to camera to everything out of the box is set up. And if that's not the route for you, you can go with the same setup that we have. And as always, the principles behind getting the cinematic shots will remain the same. All right, guys, thank you so much again for joining me today. My name is Gabe Ng, and I'll see you next time. Happy flying.